So this is a video for Pace, the party of the citizens of Europe, and we are going to try to um, point out the main elements uh, in the debate between Keynesians and monetarists. So basically, uh, this refers to uh, the role uh, of monetary policy in general, and today, what for the person who, who said they are Keynesians uh, are more or less those who are in favor of the state intervening in the economy, whereas the monetarists have this end of approach where you uh, just uh, provide uh, stability to the system and basically, basically you don't try, for example, to create jobs by, by using the, the monetary uh, instruments. So first, uh, some words about Keynes, because Keynes has uh, really uh, provoked a revolution in economics. Um, many economists uh, of the time did not understand uh, Keynes, and uh, also it has to be said that uh, many uh, so-called Keynesians today have, have never even uh, read Keynes. Um, well, Keynes' uh, uh, theory was very interesting because uh, it could explain um, why uh, in uh, uh, the state of the economy of the uh, Great Recession there was still unemployment, a fact that the basic economics could not explain. Why? Because previously in economics, you, the, the classical argument would have been that uh, if if there is um, bad economic conditions, then the salary will drop, and thus the cost of of work will will also drop, and thus uh, people will ultimately get uh, employed again. So it, it's in this context that Keynes uh, uh, became very popular. When I say that many Keynesians have not read Keynes, uh, there are many examples. For example, we'll see that there are two type, types of so-called Keynesians, and those who want to use the uh, monetary instrument, meaning that they want basically to uh, make use of the printing press to prop up the economy, uh, uh, probably have not read this sentence by Keynes that the uh, uh, playing with uh, such instrument is like playing with a fire, meaning that you know when you start a fire and you don't necessarily know how to stop the fire. Probably fire will be uh, here inflation. So I mentioned that there are two types of Keynesians, uh, fiscal Keynesians and, and monetary Keynesians. Uh, this is an informal grouping. But uh, fiscal Keynesians, I believe, are much closer to the idea of Keynes, which is that in a period of a downturn, in a recession, the state can take over the uh, investment function by, by investing itself like an entrepreneur and um, first employing people. So this has the effect of smoothing the uh, fluctuations of the business cycle. So the state becomes the employer and, uh, uh, for example, uh, does big uh, projects of works uh, and, 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 and things like that, building bridges and so on. So the most recent example of such a Keynesian approach to the economy uh, was, of course, the big um, plans of the big state plans of, of China during the two, 2008 downturn in which the state has really uh, employed a lot of people, built a lot of bridges, roads, airports, and so on. And now a word of caution is w warranted for this uh, fiscal Keynesians, um, for this fiscal policy to, to be uh, effective. Um, and in this, Keynes would have uh, perfectly under understand it, uh, contrary to the uh, more recent uh, Keynesians. Uh, who, who believe that the state can always do everything. So, because basically, uh, for, for this uh, state intervention to be effective, it has not to create more, um, in, in, uh, more risk for the world economy than it, uh, it provokes benefits by employing more people. Meaning that a state which is already in debt 
will be uh, will not be advised to use such an approach because it will create such a negative outlook for the whole uh, fiscal side uh, of the economy that the individual private entrepreneurs that would have been there otherwise would just stop uh, any investment project eventually laid off people in advance and uh, uh, certainly not start uh, a new uh, projects. So the drawback, drawbacks of uh, going more into debt to, to make the state an employer can very easily outweigh the, co the benefits of employing more people in a downturn. And basically our economies in Europe, when I say Europe it will be more like Western Europe, um, have lost this uh, capacity of uh, playing this uh, type of Keynesians uh, because there are most of them uh, with uh, more than 80% of debt in GDP and already fa facing very uh, um, a lot of turmoil on financial markets. Now I say Western Europe because there are uh, states in Eastern Europe which are much less uh, in debt than uh, the Western states in percent of, of GDP uh, because most of the, these states do not provide their citizens with any, any good uh, uh, protection. Now, the monetary Keynesians uh, is a very uh, useful, if you, were, uh, if you wish, uh, way of, of using uh, Keynes to say, okay, uh, we are still Keynesians, we want to intervene, we believe that the state is very important, but because we lost the uh, fiscal uh, ability to intervene, we're going to use the central bank um, to print more money and prop up activity. Because people with the, the people who are selling stuff will see that there is more demand, and first they will build uh, more stuff, and to build more stuff they will have to employ more people. So this is a very uh, simple reasoning and uh, um, also uh, a very uh, tentative one because uh, it's not clear cut whether uh, such policies work and plus they are opposed to what uh, Keynes uh, did uh, actually in uh, proposed. Okay, so uh, completely at the opposite spectrum of, of these people who wants to intervene are the so-called monetarists, where uh, Friedman where is probably the, the leading uh, figure, and uh, the monetarists basically believe that uh, money is neutral, meaning that uh, it's not because you double the amount of money on, in the economy that you will be producing more. Basically, each unit of money that you have doubled, well, will just be uh, worth uh, half what it was worth before, a phenomenon which is uh, uh, called inflation. And thus, the role of authorities is very reduced. For example, Friedman would be just advocating a stable growth in the money supply, meaning that the central bank will be, for example, if, if GDP is 3%, uh, GDP growth is 3%, you would be printing uh, uh, three percent more uh, of money each year, and such that the, the value of money basically uh, would uh, stay the same. Each unit of money will still be buying the same stuff. So for the monetarist, it's no use to increase the money supply because even if you increase the money supply and this is translated into a uh, uh, double income in nominal terms, uh, because the salary that this employee has is now doubled. He could, uh, if we stay at, at the level of this uh, unique employee, still consume two times more than what it was consuming before. So this is the previous situation. He had some salary and he was using, say, half of it for consumption goods. The other half he was putting it aside for uh, retirements or uh, investments, whatever. So this other half that you don't see here, is just is saving. Now you have increased the money supply and the salary is double the size. The problem is that he's buying these goods from other people who also want their salary to double. So 
the prices they are charging, like the baker and so everyone in, in the economy, uh, is two times more. So basically, consumption as in nominal amounts is just the, the double of what it was before. No. Does this employee has uh, earned anything now? Well, is is saving twice as much as before, but these savings are in view of future consumptions and uh, so for his retirement and so on. The problem is that because all the goods are twice more expensive, the situation is actually identical than before. If we want, we could uh, look at the monetary stimulus and see uh, uh, how it works according to each of the uh, ideology I presented there. Uh, let's start, for example, with the uh, Keynesian, monetary Keynesian uh, ideology in which a monetary stimulus works. It's the uh, idea used by the Fed now because they are very much monetary Keynesian. On the fiscal side, the United States cannot do much because we are uh, even more in debt than, than Europe. Uh, but on, on the monetary side, we can say that they, they are really doing a lot. For example, every month they are buying 40 uh, billions of mortgage-backed securities uh, in an attempt to prop up the real estate crisis, uh, a policy which I will not comment on. So let's see what happens if I double the money supply. So this is a given amount of goods that there is in, in the economy and they have the corresponding prices which allows to e exchange these goods between the different agents in the economy and this is a total money around in the given economy. So now I'm, I'm going to print uh, uh, some more money to double the sign of outstanding money and so now I have two times more money. Now there would be, like, uh, uh, because there is more now demand, in the uh, monetar uh, in the Keynesian uh, view, there would be an increase of uh, the production of goods because of this more demand. So the price would stay there and the production to, to be able to, to sell to all this money would go uh, at the maximum here, probably in something between here and here. Let's say here goes the production. Now, uh, this is not uh, the, the monetary view. Uh, this is uh, often uh, proposed and said we say that it works when the production capacity before was actually uh, much higher and that there were indeed people who could not consume and then this uh, stimulus has impacted their income and now they are starting to consume so there is more demand and more production and they get employed. Now imagine what if the actually the production capacity of the economy which is determined by technological factors and education of people and so on were already there. You double the, the amount of money but the amount of goods cannot go farther. Moreover, the people who are producing the goods maybe are clever. Maybe they know that this money is not real demand, but just a kind of illusion that uh, because the state has been drawing, has been putting more money in the economy. So they are thinking, okay, maybe instead of working two times more and producing two times more good, why don't I just double my price? And they adjust by the price. Note that they cannot adjust uh, in another way uh, uh, to the double uh, to the doubling of the money if the production capacity was already hit anyway, if they could not go before. So this is why we often say that uh, it's often said that Keynesianism is okay when you are um, in um, under your uh, productive capacity. Whereas it's a, a, a very inflationary, meaning that it will provoke inflation, like this doubling of price, if you are already at, uh, at, at this level of production capacity. Now, uh, do not confuse production capacity with saying that there is no uh, unemployment in the economy. Meaning that um, if you are here, it doesn't mean that you are employing everyone. Uh, there is a structural unemployment 
in the sense that you may have people who, are, who have an education which uh, uh, basically is not uh, helping for, the, um, for producing more goods in the economy. That does not mean that they are completely uh, useless, but still, um, you cannot use unemployment as an indicator that you have hit the production capacity, because maybe unemployment is, 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 is what it has to be. Okay, so I hope this slide uh, will have helped you into understanding that um, there is really these two kinds of uh, uh, people, Keynesians uh, versus monetarists, and that it's, uh, um, it's about the neutrality of money that uh, these two people have different uh, ideologies. Uh, the Keynesianism believe that money is not neutral, and the monetarists believe that you only get inflation by increasing the money supply. Now, uh, because it's a, a still a raging debate among economists, I was very shocked when uh, President Sarkozy uh, said uh, that in, in his opinion, because he thinks he, he knows everything, that's incredible, it's, it's often the case with some people, um, that they, they think they know everything, and he didn't see why the uh, European Central Bank was not targeting uh, an employment uh, level like, like the Fed. So like the Federal Reserve in, in the US, you would have not only um, price stability, but you would have a target uh, in terms of, of activity. And this is taking a Canadian uh, view, and uh, uh, this is a very, uh, how, do, how do you say? This is really not not a very uh, well thought uh, opinion because uh, since the stagflation in the 1970s, where where the state used this monetary mechanism and and not only did not get any employment but uh, uh, get a lot of inflation up to 10 percent, uh, uh, we are not sure which uh, which uh, theory. Is, is the best, which theory is true. And in Europe, uh, it was a monetarist uh, theory which was chosen, meaning that uh, uh, real, real uh, stuff are produced by real capacity and not just printing money. And first, that it's the, it's the states and the uh, economy, the real economy, which can increase this, this production and not the central bank. Thank you for uh, your attention and I uh, hope uh, I will be able to, to do other videos very soon.